now we are going to write the ciliary ganglion ciliary ganglion you have to write the parasympathetic and sympathetic and sensory first we will write the parasympathetic then we will write the sympathetic and sensory here parasympathetic you should start from on now the parasympathetic we should start from now first we should start from the nucleus so what is the nucleus related to the light reflex and the um, uh, ciliary ganglion parasympathetic root is so always keep it in mind there is some nucleus called as pretectal nucleus so we will start from that pretectal nucleus that will be communicated with the edinger westphal nucleus this edinger westphal nucleus only we have to start writing so edinger westphal nucleus is the nucleus of oculomotor nerve oculomotor nerve so edinger westphal nucleus it has to contact one person which is going near the ciliary ganglion so why are the nerve to inferior oblique now to inferior oblique is a branch from the oculomotor nerve so it should catch the nerve to inferior oblique now to inferior oblique uh, reaches the ciliary ganglion so very simple route ciliary ganglion it gets relayed in that then ciliary ganglion everybody knows you have the fibers coming out from the ciliary ganglion is called as short ciliary nerves short ciliary nerves so through the short ciliary nerves it supplies the sphincter pupillae sphincter pupillae otherwise called as constrictor pupillae and then ciliaris what is the action of sphincter pupillae it constricts the pupil and ciliaris action is it just dilates the lens okay it acts on the lens next is the sympathetic this is about the parasympathetic pathway now you are going to the sympathetic pathway sympathetic pathway as usual you have to start from the superior cervical ganglion superior cervical ganglion uh, already i said this is sympathetic ganglion you have the sympathetic chain right you have the superior cervical ganglion middle cervical ganglion and the inferior cervical ganglion from the superior cervical ganglion only sympathetic plexus comes and it's it is surrounding the uh, what which artery internal carotid artery from that the nerve is coming out the nerve is entering into the inner fissure which fissure superior orbital fissure it enters into the superior orbital fissure from there it is coming out and it supplies it should take so your ciliary ganglion is waiting here so it should go to the ciliary ganglion from the ciliary ganglion via the short ciliary now say that it should go or some other route also it will take otherwise it will go to the long ciliary nerve long ciliary nerve is a branch from the nasociliary wrong long ciliary is a branch from nasociliary otherwise it will go to the long ciliary this is called long ciliary and this is called short ciliary either way it will go and it uh, supplies the which pupillae dilator pupillae and then again ciliaris dilator pupillae and ciliaris so this is about the sympathetic so sympathetic uh, superior cervical ganglion and the same root and by either way it can come to the short ciliary or through the long ciliary it will go and supply the dilated pupillae and then third is sensory sensory is everybody knows and here the most important thing what you write is you should go via the ciliary ganglion but it is not getting relayed not getting relayed only the synapse occurs only in the parasympathetic root not in the sympathetic root neither in the or in the sympathetic root neither in the sensory root so sensory fibers are coming from your cornea or your nice eyes you have you have the cornea you have the sclera everything from there the sensation is carried by which nerve nasociliary nerve nasociliary nerve passes through the ciliary ganglion without relay okay otherwise it will go separately and it will go it will reach the uh, nasociliary is a branch of ophthalmic ophthalmic is a branch of trigeminal trigeminal will go to the all along the sensory tract it will reach the thalamus so this is about the sensory root right so this is how the nerves are all going so so this is about the ciliary ganglion sympathetic parasympathetic and sensory so what will happen if the parasympathetic is gone if the parasympathetic supply is gone what will happen sphincter pupillae will not work so the pupil will be dilated that pupillae dilated pupillae is called ad's pupil dilated pupillae is called ad's pupil and then what happens if there is a sympathetic supply is gone the sympathetic fibers supplies not only to the dilated pupillae it also supplies superior tarsus inferior tarsus muscle inferior tarsus is superior tarsus is present in the upper eyelid and inferior tarsus is present in the lower eyelid and then the next one muscle is called as orbitalis orbitalis so orbitalis 
is present in the inferior orbital fissure everybody knows the inferior orbital fissure the inferior orbital fissure is covered or closed by the muscle called orbitalis so now what happens the dil dilator pupil is out what will happen pupil will be constricted so the pupil will be constricted second superior tarsus is out superior tarsus muscle is one of part of the levator palpebris superior so if the superior tarsus is out what will happen the eye ball will be here that eye lid will be close partially that is called partial ptosis so number one meiotic pupil number two partial ptosis number three inferior ptosis if it is gone also nothing will happen orbitalis is the one which closes the uh, inferior orbital fissure so it also forms an important support for the eyeball so what happens if the support is gone what will happen to the eyeball eyeball is gone inside or sunken inside what is that called in ophthalmus so that is called in ophthalmus so what are the components for example my c81 nerve is cut it means the lower part of the sympathetic trunk is out so from this only the sympathetic fibers are going so obviously this sympathetic fibers will not be going through that so sympathetic fibers will not be coming here so there is no sympathetic supply so all your uh, muscles will be paralyzed so all your muscles will be paralyzed this condition is called as horner syndrome okay horner syndrome so horner syndrome components if i ask what are the things will you write number one dilator pupil is out so you, you will be having meiosis number two two your superior tosis out so partial tosis don't ever say complete tosis partial tosis why you should not say complete tosis complete tosis occurs in full levator palpebris superioris is gone because you have eyelid complete muscle is levator palpebris superioris only the middle portion small portion only you have the superior tarsus so don't say partial uh, complete tosis it is just partial tosis and the third one is in of thalamus and fourth one is all the fibers which are supplying the sweat gland also it is getting compromised because sweat is sympathetic so anhydrosis anhydrosis and the last one is loss of ciliospinal reflex ciliospinal reflex is just pinch on the neck the neck through that the same sympathetic root only internal carotid artery internal carotid flex the same sympathetic so it will be lost so these are the components of horner syndrome so you should write for the parasympathetic clinical application is ads people you should write for the sympathetic you should write all the four muscles with the horner syndrome and the nasociliary if the um, corneal reflex you can write the corneal reflex if there is any dust particles enter into the eye through which pathway it will go to the sensory uh, cortex nasociliary ophthalmic and then uh, trigeminal and the thalamus like that this is the root so this is about the ciliary ganglion